Hello, everyone. Welcome to Casting Workbooks live stream AMA, How to Self-Tape Like a Pro, with our special guest today, Omari Newton. Omari is a Montreal-born artist. He's a professional actor. He's a writer. He's a slam poet. He's an MC, and his work can be found on television, film, the stage, even radio. He's a teacher at the globally recognized Vancouver Film School. And he's also currently a City of Vancouver funded artist in residence. He's a playwright with Urban Inc. Productions, a very passionate playwright too. His stage work in Quebec, where he's originally from, has earned him a number of favorable reviews and awards. And I'm being modest there. Some career highlights of his already include Best Supporting Actor nomination, Soiree des Masques, for his work in the Centaur Theater's production of Joe Pennell's Blue Orange, where he played Christopher. The play also went on to win Best English Language Production. But Omari's talents go well, well beyond the stage and right onto the screen as a professional film, television, and voice actor. With more than 50 IMDb credits to his name, he's recently joined the IMDb Half Century Club. Congratulations, my friend. Thank you. You've no doubt seen him before on such successful film and television programs as CW's hit series Supernatural, been on Continuum, The X-Files, one of my all-time favorite shows. We loved watching this one, Blue Mountain State in the role of Larry <laughs> Summers. And if you caught Dwayne Johnson, The Rock, in Skyscraper, you probably saw Amari there too. But his voice talents are, are unique as well. He plays T'Challa, the Black Panther, on Marvel Superhero Adventures. He's done voice work for Corner Gas, the animated series. And of course, Netflix's number one rated animated series, The Dragon Prince. Now in its third season, he plays the role of Corvus. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Mr. Omari Newton. How are you, Omari? I'm good. Wow, that was, I'm very humbled to hear you read all that. Thank you. Hey, we really appreciate you doing this. Um, I, I know you've, you've been tuning into the live streams over the last few weeks yourself, and I think it's probably pretty obvious to you by now and everyone else, one of the major, major themes that comes up is self-taping. And yeah. despite the fact that it's 2020 and this is, is truly becoming a mainstay part of the industry, there are still a lot of actors, both brand new and, and experienced, who have questions and want to really make the difference between a good self-tape and a great self-tape. And in conversations you and I and Susan have had offline all the time, you've got some really interesting little tricks and a, and, a, and a way of approaching it that I think is so important for the actors to hear today. So I thought we could have that conversation and then I want to f let open the floodgates and let the actors just really go at you with as many questions as they can. Um, if you don't get your question to Omari today, he has been outstandingly open to reaching out to him on social media and he would encourage you to do that. And I will mention that on Instagram, he's Omari Akili Newton and Twitter. He is at Omari Akili Newton. Uh, and I'll no, mention, oh, no, I, Omari Akil Newton. Oh, Akil, forgive me. Forgive okay. me. And I'll, I'll have the team at, at casting workbook drop the, those handles for you into the chat blog. Um, so pay attention in the chat room there and they'll put those in there for you guys. If you want to reach out to him after that was so cool of you to do that. Um, Maybe we could start and first talk about audio. I wanted to yeah. break it into three parts, audio, video and lighting, and then the performance of the self-tape. So you have done hundreds of these things, Omari. Yeah. My first question to you is essentially, do you need to have a semi-pro or, or truly professional audio setup to do good audio in your self-tapes? No, is the simple answer. So of course, there's, there's you know, a range of stuff that you could use, but your iPhone, or even if you're, if you're stuck, you know, your tablet or your laptop audio quality is fine. Uh, if you got a little bit more money and you want to get like, you know, a Rode mic that uh, attaches to a DSLR uh, camera, that's totally fine, but you don't need it. You could just use your iPhone. There's a lot of people wondering too about, you see these in the backdrop. Sometimes people have, have put foam or they have put, um, you know, noise dampening blankets around them. We're going to talk about your backdrop in just a moment as well. Is there any need to try to insulate really big open rooms or spaces? Does it matter, do you think? No, I'll say it doesn't matter. And this is something that I just want to demystify uh, from years of working as a reader and talking to my friends who are producers and showrunners and casting directors. Uh, so we're not auditioning for technical jobs as actors. So you're not auditioning to be a sound engineer or for the video to be a cinematographer. 
what you want is quality enough sound that the producer or director can hear you clearly and good enough video that they can see you. But I wouldn't fuss too much about uh, the particulars of sound and uh, video. So yeah, you don't need to build a tent to put yourself inside. And, and this is for, for on-camera auditions. Voiceover auditions are a different story. Yeah, and to be clear, today we're going to talk about on-camera self-tape auditions. Yeah. What I am excited to tell everybody is we're going to be putting on a special live stream workshop uh, in the next week or so just for uh, voiceover auditions. So don't worry, we're going to dive deeper on that too. We've got a special guest coming around that and you're going to get to go really deep on that. But today we're talking about the video one specifically. Maybe I can jump back just a little on audio and open with, with reopen with the question everybody asks. Do I need a, a high definition DSLR ca camera or will my mobile phone camera do? Your mobile phone camera will totally do. Uh, if you have the budget and you want to get an expensive camera, that's fine, but it's all good. You do not need it. And one thing I want to jump back a little bit and stress here, guys, the most important thing in terms of doing a successful or efficient self-tape audition or any audition is obviously your craft as an actor. So I just want to stress, if you're spending more time and money on picking up gear than you are on staying in class or reading or training or, you know, looking at quality films and performances and thinking about them as a professional and asking yourself, why does this work? You're doing it wrong. And the, the analogy I use is back in the day when we used to play basketball, right? The guy who showed up at the park with the new Jordans and the gear, you know, he might look really great, but he's not going to get picked for the team if he can't play, right? So I would, I would really stress to focus on your craft more than, than the technical aspects of a self-tape. And, and to, to remind actors out there, especially now, um, you can absolutely, I'm not a lawyer, I'm not an accountant, but I am going to go out on a limb here and I'm going to tell you, you can write off the cost of your phone as part of what you do as a working actor. Um, don't be afraid to invest a little bit more if you can on, uh, on as new an iPhone or an Android phone as you can because to Omari's point, the, the cameras and the microphones are outstanding now. And they would, they would be able to give you far, far more than, than anything you needed. Certainly would meet you wherever a DSLR camera is getting you at this point. Yeah, I mean, back, back I'm so old and I joked about this online, but when I first started self-taping, I would literally go somewhere and have somebody put me on tape, you know, analog, and I'd get a VHS hard copy and have to FedEx it to LA. So your iPhone, the camera on that is exponentially better than the, the pro quality cameras they were using when I started self-taping. So yeah, you're all good with your iPhone. Now, let's talk for a minute to, uh, in audio, one of the problems that comes up sometimes and, and people forget, and this was a tip you were giving me the other day when we were, we were talking, is in the middle of your self-tape, there's nothing worse than when your phone rings. Yeah. There's nothing worse. Um, it sounds like a basic thing, but we sometimes forget it. Um, how do you set up your phone before you even begin? Are there any little settings, things you want to know, whether it's Android or iOS? Yeah, well, I, I use an iPhone. I definitely put it on Do Not Disturb or whatever your phone's equivalent of Do Not Disturb. Uh, that's, you know, you want to do that because you don't want to be interrupted with the flow. Just keep it simple. Airplane mode also works. If you really, really want to be 100% sure that those VIP, my mom is a VIP, you know, and so she can break through even my Do Not Disturb. Right. Uh, and my wife can do that too. So if I put it on airplane mode, nobody can get through and you can, you can ensure you have an uninterrupted performance. Mm -hmm. um, one of the other questions that comes up often too is if there's any concern about uh, ambient noise in the background, um, is there any way for someone to know what if the fridge is humming? If the, if the washer in the background that maybe they didn't think they could hear it shows up later. Are there any tricks to minimize background noise aside from unplugging yeah. them? Yeah, you can definitely get microphones that, that focus on just the sound coming from, you know, in front of them. But generally speaking, I would just say, you know, try to use as much practical uh, common sense as you can, where, you know, if, if you've got a, a noisy fan, turn it off. If you've got a, the, the fridge is humming, turn that off. Obviously, remember to put it back on so your food doesn't go bad. Uh, and just the thing about self-tapes that's so great is you can choose the, the perfect moment when, you know, the sound in your neighborhood is as quiet as possible to record. Like for example, I live in, in downtown Vancouver in the West End. And right now, because this is live, we might hear some interruptions with like, you know, dump trucks going by or somebody mowing the lawn. Just choose an area in your home that's quiet and a time that's quiet to record audio and you should be fine. Sarah Wong, I wanted to say hello to you too and good morning. Thanks for tuning in. I'm glad you're here as well. Um, Omari, you're in the middle of a great self-tape. 
you're, you're auditioning, you're nailing it just the way you wanted to. You've got your, your camera set up, everything's going fine. Halfway through the audition, faint sound of sirens in the background. Do I think you, do you keep going or do you pause or do you restart? I would never stop a tape and I'll, I'll offer why. I don't think we are accurate gauges of how great or how effective our performance is. So if anything, I would stay in character, I would finish the take, and after when I'm out of the scene, I'd review it and see how distracting it is. I mean, the, the noise you hear could actually enhance the performance if, if it's you know, suited towards the role, uh, you might not have to worry about it. I would just highly recommend focusing on being present and being in the moment and staying in character. And right on cue, my dog just got up and went to the door because somebody brought a package. <laughs> I'm not going to stop this. I'm going to keep focusing on you. That's right. There you go. You're, 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 you're walking the walk. I like that. Yeah. Um, I'm curious what all of you watching right now, let me know in the chat log. I'd like to share this with Omari, all your feedback and everything you have to say. If in the middle of your self tapes and you can hear that noise in the background, uh, you know, a siren, whatever it is, do you stop, do you pause? Uh, do you keep going or do you, re, do you re, redo the whole thing? Um, audio is so important. When we've talked to casting directors too, um, most of them have tend to say what you just said, Omari, that, you know, uh, keep going. Don't, don't lose that. They understand that you're not in a closed studio. And I think most people are generally forgiving. And I, I also want to offer for people to, to view things from the perspective of the people who are going to be watching the tape. If somebody lays down a tape and gives a performance that shows they're the second coming of Meryl Streep, and they, they're, they're present, they crush it. If you were casting the project, would you say, man, that is an amazing actor, they're perfect for the role, they crushed it, but their dog walked by, can't hire them? Obviously not, right? Like we, we get this mindset as actors, and, and this comes from you know, conditioning is from when we're young, where we think this is an exam and they're, they're testing us and they're, you know, they're rooting against us, anything that goes wrong, they're gonna eliminate us. You know, the casting directors and the directors, they want you to be the person as much as you want the job. So I'm just teaching tips today to, to help you showcase yourself in the best light. And I'm seeing some great conversation in the chat room, Omari, and several people have referenced noise reduction software. Um, mm -hmm. iMovie and, and Mac computers certainly have that. If you've got one, mm -hmm. if you know someone, I, I've used them anytime. It's as simple as clicking a button if you mm -hmm. want to filter it. You probably have some friends who have it. And there's similar software available for you on PC. Is that necessary in your, in your thinking in terms of the audio? I don't think it's necessary, but I will say that anything that reduces focus being drawn away from your performance is beneficial to your work. So if you have the capability to do that, absolutely. If you don't know, by the way, YouTube is an amazing resource for anything. You can literally type in anything on YouTube and they'll have an answer for it. So yeah, if you can reduce the noise in the background, go ahead and do that. But I, I would still say, don't break out of a great take when you're in the moment because of something that might end up being inconsequential. Now, if I missed anything on audio you want, please make a note to throw those audio related questions, maybe even put it in all caps up front so I know that the topic of your question or we can get up to Omari later as well. I wanna move over to lighting and video. Mm -hmm. um, this is a really, really obviously important one. Um, first question right off the bat, we get asked this by actors all the time and I think it's a little bit of tomato or tomato. Do you, when you self tape, use your selfie cam and, and make sure that you are lined up and you can see yourself, or do you turn it to your external camera? Do you have a preference? I would never recommend watching yourself act while you're acting. In fact, right now during these Zooms, I can see myself talking, and that's a level of distraction that makes me less present in the conversation. So I would highly recommend not having the screen face you so that it doesn't pull you out of the performance. You should be focused on being present and living truthfully under imaginary circumstances, so I believe that was uh, Sanford Meisner who, who coined that phrase. And to be present, you want to be connected with your reader and not looking at what you're doing in the scene. Frank Tiefenbach agrees. It's distracting. It's like a background performer on set that's sort of yep. drawing you away from what you're trying to do. I, I agree, Frank. Um, a, a really friendly tip, and you guys know this. Some of you are thinking, I never thought of that before. Do your test and then grab some duct tape and leave your mark on the floor where you need to line up so that you can always make sure that you're in the shot. One of the things we're gonna show you actually in a little bit, we're gonna do a little demo on the new Actor App 3.0 from Casting Workbook, which is available in the iOS and the Android store for free. We've got a really cool thing you can do to fix that, but we'll talk about that after. So you've got that external facing cam, it's there. Now, can we talk, Omari, about what I like to call the flattering angle? 
There is certainly that moment of any photo or video where you are talking and we are looking up and we tend to look a little bit younger, a little bit thinner, right. a little bit more beautiful. And then we've all had those photos where somebody gets in like, yeah, yep. here and it's just yep. terrible. Mm -hmm. um, straight up, down below, exactly dead center. Can you talk to me about the angle of the video? What makes a great self tape in terms of angle? Yeah, generally speaking, I have the, the lens of the camera about eye level with me so that my eye lines make it look like I'm, I'm talking to somebody. Obviously, you don't look directly down the barrel of the lens. You just look, you have your, place your reader slightly to the left or right of the lens, whatever you feel comfortable, and you keep eye contact with them. Uh, if you have multiple people in the scene, the person that your character speaks to the most, make that your reader, and then you can shoot your eye line to everyone else just on the equal distance on the opposite side of the lens. So, and to, and to achieve this in terms of what level you set the camera at, you can buy, you know, a relatively cheap tripod, uh, or right here, I've got a, a mini tripod that you just, you know, you just click it onto an iPhone and you can, you know, stack it on uh, a cupboard or something or, or stack some boxes or books. There's ways to do this with absolutely uh, no money. And let's talk about that because it's COVID, global quarantine, times are tough for everybody. Actors are hurting right now, especially. You've got a backdrop set up there that I thought looked pro. And what I loved is you put this together on, on shoestring. Talk to me about the backdrop. A, is it critical? If we were just had something like this in my office, does it, does it take away or make it better or worse? Talk to me about background. Yes, I think having a cluttered background, whether it's a photo or you see a bunch of stuff going on, is distracting. Remember, the primary focus you want for the producers and the directors is on you and your performance. So for a backdrop, I find that a color like you know, blue, like I have, or gray is great. Uh, I, so I live in a one bedroom condo in Vancouver, so I don't have a huge space and I still was able to find a place to set up. And I'm gonna kind of show you guys behind the curtain in a second to see how you can do this. Uh, what I would recommend, if you don't want to paint your wall, you don't have a wall you can paint, I went to Canadian Tire and got these things called hangables, right? I think it was like five bucks, right? Then I went and picked up a blue sheet. And what's important is don't get a fitted sheet. Just get a blue sheet that's not fitted. And what I did was, I'll tilt up here. If you see, you can see those hangables. And by the way, I didn't have to drill into the wall. They just come with adhesive on the back and I, I glued them to the wall. Then I took a, a pair of scissors and I poked holes in the top of the sheet so I could just drape it here. So now I've got this totally removable sheet so that awesome. you know, I don't have to have this area in my house that looks goofy when people come over and they go, what, you know, why is there a curtain there? You can take it off when guests come over, you hardly notice the little hooks up, but you have an easy place in your home where you can go and do your self tape. And I'll also say, I chose this area because it has optimal lighting for what I need. So if you, I'll show you guys behind the curtain a little bit more. So if you look on top here, there's an overhead light. I don't know if you guys can see that there. And then this is kind of hilarious. Yeah, this is cool. I love how you got this set up here. This is really cool. So to get this effect of this professional uh, you know, looking lighting, I've got this alien contraption I've rigged here, which is a house lamp with a shade to get a softer light. And I, and I got these two clip-on lights from Canadian Tire. I think they were like 20 bucks each, just in case I needed a little extra pop with the lighting. Like if I was doing this at nighttime and I didn't have the sunlight coming in from my windows. But you know, every, every space is different. Some people might have a beautiful huge window that faces the sun in their home. So you can set up your self-taping area in front of that window and natural light might be enough. What you just wanna make sure you have a key source of light that's overhead lighting you and then a second source of light to reduce shadows. And, and again, I think it's really important, Omar, that we remind everyone, we're talking today about the difference between a good self-tape and a great self-tape. And, and of course, lighting really, is critical. Um, do you need to have it? Not necessarily, right? Like you said, if you're given that Meryl Streep self-tape audition, don't worry, it's gonna shine through and casting directors understand it. But having that light and the, the visibility of your face projected properly, it absolutely can make a difference. Where do you always position your lighting? To, to the side front, back front, overhead? Is there any tips you have in terms of where you put artificial lighting? And again, I'm, I'm not a professional lighter, so I'll, but I'll, I'll say what I always do, I have a, a main source of light that's slightly elevated that kind of illuminates the entire thing. And it's kind of funny, but it's true. As a black guy, lighting is particularly important for me because I've been in too many pictures where I'm just a pair of floating eyes and teeth. <laughs> <laughs> lights are set for my white friends. So this is something yeah. for me to think about. 
I set a key light overhead and a second source of light coming down, or I, I, you might have like the sunlight for your window being a second source of light uh, coming through. I think, I mean, the way you're coloring is right now and the, the, it, the, there's a good glow off it. I can see you've got it angled really nice. And I think that, that it has made the contrast of your blue backdrop look really great. By the way, does it matter the coloring of your backdrop? Uh, I, I would say I would go with blue or gray. You don't want to have uh, green or red because it's, it's too distracting. You want something that that's, makes people focus on you. So the standard I find is blue or gray. And I should, I should also add in terms of wardrobe, and most experienced actors know this already, you don't want to have a shirt that has, you know, a band name on it or wear plaid or some crazy logos or design because it's just distracting, right? You, you want the focus to be on you and your face. Uh, and I'll also say for the framing, you guys kind of see the way I am right now. This is what they call medium close or mid close, which just kind of, you know, just below the shoulders and above the head with not too much space in between. So this is the framing that you want to have, whether you're standing or you're sitting. I like the way the distance that you have there now. Um, talk to me about standing or sitting. Um, mm -hmm. How do you approach that in the self-tape? I think it just depends on what the role calls for. Like, people have to remember that, you know, again, the performance is what's key. So if you're playing a, a police officer or you're playing, you know, somebody who's supposed to be in a position of authority who's intimidating, sometimes standing up will help you embody that vibe. Uh, if you're playing somebody who, who's maybe grieving or somebody who's having an intimate conversation, sitting down and leaning in might help accommodate that performance. So let the key always be, what is your character's objective? What are the obstacles? What are the previous circumstances? A great book, this is old school, I can recommend for especially young actors, is Uta Hagen's Respect for Acting. Uh, you know, everything that there needs to know about acting has been figured out a long time ago by way smarter people than me, but I would highly recommend Uta Hagen's Respect for Acting. She has these things called the six steps for text analysis that I learned when I was 19 and I used to this day. Um, before we move off lighting, I want to remind everyone, if you've got any lighting or video specific questions, uh, please make a point of uh, sending those into the Q&A section and maybe all caps intro it with a video or a lighting question so we can we can help organize those for Omari as well. Um, cameras now are really, really good. And yeah. you, can, you can often shoot in standard definition or high definition. Do you see a distinction? Is it important? I, the, format, the video format I use is uh, MP4. So again, I'm not a technical guy. I'm a guy who, whenever daylight savings comes, my, my microphone is just the wrong time for the rest of the year. I don't think the tech, getting into the technical stuff is, is too, too important. I would say make sure the image uh, is clear enough that it's not distracting to people viewing. Uh, your iPhone is good enough and the standard format would be MP4. I think the, uh, the, the next part of the conversation that's so important uh, once we look past lighting in that video section, of course, comes down to no matter what audio and video is, performance. Yes. Eye lines. You have to always look to the left, to the right, right into the camera. What, is your, what do you teach all the students at VFS year after year? You're one of the top teachers there. You're rated so highly. Casting directors tell me all the time you are one of the best at self-tapes. How do you approach eye lines? I, I would say you want to position your reader to just to the left or right of the lens. That's the most important thing. Uh, and in terms of prep, I'll say this. Obviously, text analysis and rehearsal is key. Another really important point, and I'm sure casting directors will thank me for this, read the directions in the email you get from casting and follow them. Because the only time sometimes you will look right down the lens is for your slate, which we'll talk a little bit about uh, later on. But there's no mystery to this. There's no secret. The casting director will tell you exactly what they want or need from you. And you follow that and you're good to go. So if you're hearing it, uh, Omari, clearly everyone, don't overthink it. If the scene calls for you to walk into a room and stand up and have a conversation, stand up. If you're sitting down, sit down, right? And if I, and I'm going to add, add a bonus tip, generally speaking, I don't like to walk into a scene for a self tape and I'll explain why. Uh, most casting directors and producers are looking at a bunch of, you know, thumbnail stills before they view an audition. And if you're walking into the frame, there's no one in the image when they first look at it. So there's an off chance they might think like, is this a mistake? What's going on? So for me, I'll just, if I'm going to be walking into a scene for self tape, I'll just kind of start off in profile and I'll just turn into it so that when they're looking at the thumbnail, they still see me and there's still a presence in the frame. Can we talk about readers for a moment? This also yeah. comes up week after week. Um, 
what do you do? Do you, do you, do you call someone on speakerphone? Do you bring them? Where do you position your reader? Any of those kinds of things. How have you handled that in the past? Talk to us a little bit about readers. Yeah, so readers are, are important. Uh, and I'll talk about readers from two perspectives. I'll talk about readers from the perspective of, as an actor, being a reader for someone else uh, and, and finding readers. So if at all possible, find a professional actor or someone, if you're just starting out, someone who's at least at your level, who, who you trust to work with you. If you're in an absolute bind, I know that sometimes people use their mom or their kid, but it's not ideal for you and it's not ideal for casting. Remember, anything that distracts from your performance is a negative. So you want to you wanna have your, your acting community. So have a, an acting buddy who you know you can call and help. Um, there, are, there are some great resources available. And actually, Casting Workbook has some exciting stuff coming up uh, in terms of coaching and readers where you can have a coach online and capture the performance for a self-tape. So you'll never be uh, without a reader. And that's, you know, I don't know if we can announce any of that just yet, but that's coming up soon. Oh, you, you, you scoot, you scooped it. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Omari Newton, just, uh, he just tipped you guys off. We were not going to make an official announcement about this until next week. Um, but you're absolutely right, Omari. And I, I should take a quick moment and let everybody know uh, next week, we will be announcing officially through our newsroom and, and to a notice to all our members. Way to go, Amari. You just, you just forced my hand there. Um, I'm here for you, Christopher. Sorry. That's where my <laughs> We're, uh, we're going to be announcing the CWB Live program, and we will be introducing virtual coaching where some of the most elite coaches in the world, you'll be able to connect with them virtually through Casting Workbook. One of those incredible coaches who's just signed on with us is going to be Omari. Um, and you're going to see a host of incredible coaches. And oh, look at everybody's freaking out on the, on the chat room there. Great. You, they scooped it. So there's going to be a lot more on that. And, and in particular, one of the great features that will be coming to it once we roll it out and we have the full version available is eventually you'll be able to have readers as well. You'll be able to book those, get coaching on your self tapes, get coaching on, on particular parts of your craft. So that's an essential thing. I think, uh, you know, one of the things that's come up too is, is clear to me, you can always do the self tape a little better and, and you've got to, right? What do you tell your students the, the self tapes not going away? Is it? Oh, no, I think the, I think the self tape will become the norm. And again, uh, casting workbook, you guys launched the, the virtual casting director feature as well. And I think in these times of, of self isolation, yeah, we're, there's, we're not going to want to have a bunch of people gathering rooms unnecessarily. So getting really, really good at your self taping skills will become more and more important. And I, I know I'm jumping around a bit, but a little bit more on readers. Right? Yeah, back to that, please. Yeah. Make sure your reader isn't speaking too loud so that their voice is more prominent than yours on the audition tape. It's your audition, not theirs. And the other thing would be, there's a delicate balance as an actor who's being a reader for someone between giving a performance in support of the person on camera whose audition it is uh, and being flat. So remember, when you're someone's reader, you're not trying to steal the scene or win the Oscar. Like I have some friends who are incredible actors, but I can't use them as readers because they get so into it that it takes me out of it almost, right? So what I do is I, when I'm a reader for someone, I keep my volume at 50% of what I would normally do. And I make sure that I'm speaking in a way that, that supports the scene, but doesn't steal or detract from the performance that's on camera. I see a great comment from Clint Butler here, and he's saying, you know, it's fair, but casting directors have been stressing a lot how readers have to be able to be heard as well. And oh, that's critical. And you're, you're totally right, Clint. And I think one, what we have learned is, you know, if you are scrambling the day of your self-tape to find your reader, you probably haven't prepared them enough to. They're, they're a li you know, a great reader is someone you, you trust and that you can call, and they should understand how to project and be clear, but not overact, which is what casting directors and actors, like you've said all the time, they, we have actually heard on this show from casting directors who have said, I have had to um, book someone else because a, a, a half-decent self-tape came in, but the reader just overtook it or they, they just, they, for whatever reason, they distracted or diminished the performance. And so I can't stress that, that, that enough. Do you, do you have the same readers you try to go to over time? How, how much notice and how often, how early do you reach out to them? I'm a huge proponent in having your, your tribe or your acting communities. If you're fortunate enough to have gone to uh, you know, theater school, whether it's VFS or a three-year program, you'll know the people with the craft and the work ethic and the commitment who you can trust and go to. So having an acting buddy who, whether it's, you know, you get an audition at 10 o'clock at night and you need to run it or, or whatever, having some, your, your tribe of people you can go to. And, it, and obviously it helps if you can do, if you do the same for them, if it's a reciprocal agreement, 
I try to have my reader be the person who I was rehearsing with as well so that they understand the scene and, and it showcases you in the best light. Now, uh, I would love, in a moment, I'm going to bring on a special guest who's going to show us, give us a, a, high, a high level look at some of the cool things from the self-tape you can do in the new Actor app from Casting Workbook. Um, let me ask you another question. How, how, do you know, how do you know after your self-tape you're, you're satisfied with it? How many takes do you do? And do you critique your own self-tape before you click send and get it over to your agent? Or have you got a system or a process? Because for a lot of actors, I mean, it's bad enough when you got to stand there and do it in the room. You can be very critical of yourself watching it over and over. How many times should you record yourself before you know you've got the take? That's a great question. Uh, people disagree about this, but I would say you want to make sure you prepare, you know, obsessively, right? You, you, you want to be able to, if you can, if time permits, you want to be able to know the scene and not be thinking about the lines and just be comfortable and be present. And once you have that level of preparation, I would say, 15 minutes to half an hour tops is the most you, you should spend recording it. And to me, a successful audition, whether it's a self tape or otherwise, is when I feel present and I feel connected to my reader and I'm going, I've, I've analyzed the text properly and I'm going after my goals. And once I've accomplished that, whether it's one take or whether it's on the third take, I'm done. And, and I'll, I'm telling you as someone who, I work at Shoreline Studios as well as Vancouver Film School where I'm creative director. And I've been a reader for hundreds of people who come in there to do uh, tapes. It rarely gets better by the hundredth take. So there, there are actors who go in there and they get very OCD about it and they want to, they want to do it over and over and over again. And there's a great quote by the musician, uh, Neil, Neil Young, who said when he records an album, he only does one take. Because he said, you might get technically better with more takes, but you get further away from the source or the soul of the art, the more you do. Sometimes the mistakes are what makes it unique. Ah, oh, great quote. I know him well. He's a uh, well said, Omar. I think that's really interesting. Um, we're going to come back to performance more in a minute because I can see the questions coming in. Um, before we do that, I want to give Omari a, a quick break. And I would like for the first time on our live stream AMA series, everybody buckle up. I'd like to introduce you to the one and only, our founder and our CEO, uh, Miss Susan Fox. I would love for Susan to jump on. She's gonna give you guys a look at the new Actor app. Susan, how are you? Can you hear me okay? Hey, <laughs> hey really good, thanks Christopher. Omar, you're amazing. I'm learning just listening. Thank you. Everyone, uh, please say hello to Susan Fox. Uh, doesn't she look great? I, I, Susan, thanks for coming and doing this. Um, the new app is really exciting. We've been, we've been working around the clock, the team at Casting Workbook. I don't think anyone's more excited about it than you are. Oh my God, look at the chat room. It's going mental for Susan. Um, Susan, what, why particularly are you most excited about the app right now in terms of the self-tape? There's some really cool things that I don't know actors realize it can do, right? Yeah, it's, it's fully integrated. Um, we've now, we're, you're self-taping clicking a link and it's going right to your agent. Um, so the thing is we've also integrated jobs. So when breakdowns are open and actors can submit, they can actually um, click a link, uh, create their self tape, write it from their phone and send it to their agent and or directly to casting if they're self repped. So it's, it's like oh, this one stop. Wow, this is really nerve wracking. Yeah, no, no. I, this this is, I, <laughs> I am so glad that you are on the... <laughs> Don't worry, Susan. You just you do do what you do great and 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 teach this thing. Do you have a minute to show us a little demo? Do we dare do that yeah. on Zoom? I know yeah. that uh, sometimes when you're live streaming technology, we're at their mercy. But I would love to show everybody just a little taste of it. Could you can you attempt to do that? And let's see if everyone. Yes, can I, see I will. It. And as a matter of fact, my son Taylor is here. He's uh, he's gonna be my actor. So I'm just gonna put this on and do a couple of takes. I'm not set up, Omar. You're gonna. My, my background not, is not decluttered, but I'm going to just give you a little taste of the app. So let me go on to screen share right now, and I'll talk to you after. Here it goes. Sick. So we're giving you a look now at the new Actor App 3.0. If you go into the Android or Apple store, you can download it for free. Oh, it's beautiful. We've been working so hard on this after so much feedback from you guys. So take a look here whenever you're ready, Susan. Here it goes. Okay, can you see it? Yeah, it looks great. Looks great. Okay. Okay. So this is uh, logging into the app. Now, everybody that has a Casting Workbook account, you get a free, this comes with it. You can download it in the App Store or the Google Play Store. You use your Casting Workbook uh, ID to log in. So you just put in your ID and your password and sign in. 
and it should pull over materials from Casting Workbook for you. So here we have, you can see at the top, it says recordings. That's where you can generate a self-tape recording. But in this case, let's show you a couple of new menus on the bottom. This has changed. You've got home button at the bottom. That's where you can go and initiate a recording. The next one is, this is called jobs. Now you can see that we have a job called just for fun. That's uh, basically a uh, uh, one that we put up so you can play. Uh, it only goes to us. And when you find a job that you like, you can actually flag it and then go to your, your jobs that you um, would like to flag. And these are ones that you have drafts or submitted. And you also have all of your profile details here. So this is something, this is a, a so test good. account we made up. It's called Josh Miller. This is not a real person. Um, so we will, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back over to jobs. And I'm gonna show you on this tab right here, I'm gonna click on this. And I'm going to go over and I'm going to click on this job just for fun. And we're going to submit um, to, let's go down and let's pick one of these roles. You can submit to lots of these. So let's make him an adult. So we're going to come click submit. And here you can see that when you're submitting, you can pick your agent if you have multiple agents. You also can pick which photo you want if you have multiple photos by clicking the edit. And here, for example, I've got a resume and you see the little ellipses here. If I click that, I can go in and view it. I'm doing this sideways, by the way. And if I want to open it, you can see that I can pull my resume up and, and that's, so that's done. And then in here, they're, gonna, they're actually asking you to tape. So you can click and attach a self-tape. You can create notes. Right, right from your video tape. file, right? Like right from your video folder, photo folder. Right. You can pull it from exactly, that. right there. So, so let's, let's go in and let, let's do this one. And let's create a self-tape. So I'm going to click attach self-tape. Now it says I can attach it or I can add. See this add button at the top here? I'm going to click that add button. And now you can pull from your camera roll or you can record right from your phone. Now, as Amar Amari was saying, these phones are 4G. This is Taylor here. Hey, Taylor. Yes. Um, and you can zoom in, you can brighten it, you can do a lot of different things. So I'm going to zoom in on Taylor and I'm going to do a quick two takes. And um, this is really nice quality. So I'm going to go and here, hold on. Let's, let's, let's just write me. You can do a lot of different things. So I'm going to zoom in on Taylor and I'm going to retake that because I clicked the wrong button. Hold on just a minute. <laughs> right. By the way, Nicole Basta, live. Nicole Basta says, hi, Taylor. You've got, you've got a lot of fans already, pal. You haven't even said yeah, anything. All my fans out there. Hey, well done. Well okay. done. Here you go. You're, you're rolling. Hi, I'm Taylor. I'm standing in for Joshua Miller, and this is my self tape. Okay, we're gonna stop that one, and I'm gonna use that one, and let's do it again. So let's go save and record more. Here we go. Take two. Take two. This is Taylor filling in for Joshua Miller, and this is my self tape. All right. Okay, so that's it's that easy. You're basically taking, and I'm gonna say I'm gonna use the video now. At this point, I'm gonna say done and edit. And at this point, you really can do a lot of oh, stuff. Wow, you, can, that. you can take your take. If you select it and you edit it, you can trim it. You can do trim so you could actually take this and play it and trim it. I won't, I won't get too detailed for you. you could, this is a very, very short video, so it's not going to trim very well. And then you can take these clips as well and you can edit them. You can add a title card. It automatically writes the title card for you. Look at that. And, and so this was this new version of our 3.0 was created in consultation with so many actors, so many casting directors and agents like this is really what we're looking at here is is a labor of effort from the company just from feedback that we have been getting over the last few months, right? Oh yeah, we, and we this is two years in the making. This is the brand new 3.0. Um, this was we started doing um, audition tape. We we built the first auditions online for 20th Century Fox in 2003, and we've just been building on it since then. Here here you've got your your takes, and you can take these. And I'm just going to do this really quickly. You can take uh, your trimmed clip plus your other clip that didn't get trimmed, which was number one. And I'm going to now go and I can, you can combine them or just upload them. And in this case, I can kind of go, I want this one first and I want that one second. And you can move them around. You can put your title card wherever you want, or you can just send the whole thing and your agent can pick which one they like. In this case, let's preview this and I'll just show you what this looks like. And while you're watching, don't worry, everyone. Uh, our team will put a link for the app stores in there for you.
this is Taylor filling in for Joshua Miller, and this is myself, Dave. <laughs> Here you go, you're, you're rolling. Hi, I'm Taylor, I'm standing in for Joshua Miller, and this is myself, Dave. Okay. Well, Here you go, you're, you're rolling. Okay, this is the edit, I actually I'm threw Taylor. it in. I'm yeah, yeah. Joshua Miller, and this is myself, Dave. Now, you, now, at this point, we can upload, combine it, it goes to the agent, and it's done. And when I go, if I wanted to go combine and attach, I can actually combine, attach it to the job, and your job is done. Nadine thinks this is really cool. Elsie thinks this is a game changer, Susan. I don't disagree. You guys are absolutely right. This has been so many months in the making, and we do this so that you guys can take your career to the next level. Um, Susan, I would love... Is there anything else you have a, a minute now to show us? Or what I would really love to do is put together a live stream with you where you could really dive deeper because there's so many things this, this new 3.0 can do, isn't there? Oh, absolutely. We could spend um, an hour and give you some really cool tips on how to use this and get the most out of it. I think what Omari's teaching today is so valuable though as a start. This is, you know, this is kind of a technical uh, piece, uh, being able to be seen and heard in a great light and, and optimizing your home environment is also a really important piece. So those, th that combination, I mean, obviously, as Omari said, work your craft, you know, you, you want to work your craft, but you also, so there we go. And then, and then it doesn't always take 20 minutes, depending on the length of your cut and you're done. So that piece has now been sent and you can see that it's been submitted and received. And it could go right to your agent too, correct? It does. The agent, your agent, if you're represented, your agent has a dashboard and these things go um, basically into their dashboard where they can approve them. They can get them on their phone, approve it on their phone and go. So it's, it's a really kind of a, a seamless process. And in this case, this one we call just for fun, we threw this in for you to practice with. Uh, this does not go to agents because it's called direct to actor and it's just for playing around and uh, it's risk-free. We're going to do some really cool um, uh, monologue uh, competitions. We're going to do some really fun things and let you play with the app and really get used to using it before things get into full swing here. You and Omar, you're spoiling all my big news today. Yes, Susan Fox Sorry. just announced as well. Yeah. Next week on top of that, we're going to be launching a North America wide contest for you to use the app and submit an audition monologue. Uh, I'm not going to say anything more about it until next week. It's going to be really, really cool though. And uh, there's going to be some interesting prizes and some interesting industry casting directors who are going to be participating and we're going to be putting you in front of them. Susan, that was awesome. I, we're so excited to show that. Um, I want to thank you for doing it. And we let's definitely do a live stream where we can show everyone in greater detail because I think, oh, absolutely. what do you think of it, Omari? I think it's awesome, and I wish this was around 20 years ago. <laughs> yeah, you, you, yeah. You, we, we learned from your, all of your uh, history. Thank yeah. you so much. I'm going to go back on the other side and now watch the rest of this. this Everybody, is please thank join you. me in thanking our CEO and founder, you, the all. one and only Susan Fox. Susan, thank you. I'll thanks, talk to you later on. Thanks. Okay, okay. bye. Uh, Susan's amazing. I've got this. I always wish that she was doing this. She is such a ton of fun to work with and she's been driving all of us so hard to get that ready. Thank you for doing that, Susan. Um, Omari, I would like to now open it up to the live stream audience. So many questions have been coming in. I'm going to try to rip through as many as possible here. Um, mm -hmm. What I would remind everyone is uh, on Twitter or Instagram, you can find Omari. Uh, he is Omari Akil Newton, and we'll put a little link or mention of that again in the chat log uh, in, a few, in a few moments from our team so they can find you. If they don't get their question today, you're totally open to them reaching out and throwing a question to you? Yeah, totally. Add me, I'll, I'll add you back. Unless you're insane, then I won't add you back. But my default will be that you're not insane. <laughs> And, and you're on Facebook too. Um, <laughs> yeah. Omari, it, it, let's, let's dive into it. Uh, I really want to know, and back to video, Shiko had a question that if you are using a DSLR camera, is there any particular type of lens you think matters? You know, short, long range, uh, medium zoom lens, anything in particular there? I know we were sort of, sort of saying you really don't need to use a DSLR, but do you have any, uh, an opinion on it? I humbly offer that I am not technically equipped to answer that question. So whatever the standard lens that comes with DLSR is will be stronger than whatever's on a phone and you'll be good to go. Uh, let's talk about, I've got a question here from Julie. Julie is in Toronto and Julie wants to know, when do you submit yourself tapes? Uh, right before the deadline, uh, well before the deadline? Do you have a strategy? Do you have any kind of, now that we're in the time where you have a bit more control like that, you don't have to be at a particular call time. How do you handle it? 
that so that's a really good, good question i would give yourself a healthy runway at least i would say a few hours uh before the deadline and something else i want to mention about deadlines and i will offer for my personal shame and humiliation for your benefit audience. Make sure you're clear on the time zone when your deadline is. Living in Vancouver, right, there's a lot of audition requests that I get from the East Coast. So if it says, you know, 10 a.m., make sure you know whether that's Eastern Standard Time or Pacific Time. But I would say, yeah, because you never know what might go wrong technically, you want to give yourself some one way so that if casting doesn't get it, they can reach out to your agent and be like, hey, what's going on? Because if you miss the deadline and the time is up and they need someone quickly, uh, you're, you know, you can't get the role. So yeah, give yourself a couple hours before the deadline to submit. Great question from Andrew here. He wants to know if you can do this, by the way, you're probably fairly technically savvy, Andrew. This is a cool question. Is jump cutting to a close up in the self tape acceptable or necessary? That I can answer. No, no, don't. It, I think it would be distracting. This is not an audition to be a DOP or an edit. You don't want to do cuts. You don't, I mean, the most I'll do if I'm doing two scenes, uh, you know, for the same project, I'll do a little crossfade that you can just do on iMovie at the end, but don't be jump cutting. Don't be adding, you know, fire coming out of your hands. If you're auditioning to play a superhero, they want to see your acting. Robert wants to know, quick question regarding lighting, Amari. Ring lights versus soft boxes. What's the better option in your opinion? I think they're both fine. I think obviously there's different levels of quality for all of them. A ring light is, can be great. Uh, just as long as you think it looks good and showcases you in the best light, go with that. Obviously a great soft box can work, but again, I have neither right now. And I think the, the lighting quality is pretty solid. I uh, got a question here uh, from Nella. Nella is a parent and their daughter is 12 years old, it looks like. And she's been asked to submit a self tape where she's got to just talk about herself. Any tips there? What, what would you say to a young actor who's got to go on? How long should they talk? And what would you recommend that Nella talks about? Or her daughter, rather. Yeah, like if they didn't specify the length, I'd say give it at least a solid 30 seconds to a minute. And I would just say they probably want to get a sense of your personality and yourself and see how comfortable you are on camera. So, you know, get yourself uh, in, in a comfortable kind of vibe and just have a casual conversation. They're, they're looking to see your personality. A uh, question here from Calder. He wants to know, Omari, could you walk us through a typical workflow from the moment you get a request mm -hmm. for the self-tape right through the moment on the actor app 3.0, you push mm -hmm. send. What's Great your process? Point. What does that look like for you? I'll do the speed through version of this for all actors out there. First thing you do, read the email, respond to your agent, let them know you got it, let them know if you're submitting or, or not, right? That's the first thing you do. Next thing I'll do is I'll download the sides, I'll read the sides, I'll bust out uh, Uta Hagen's six steps, I'll do a text analysis so I understand what's going on. Once I've done my analysis properly, I call up my acting buddy and I rehearse the scene and I work it until I'm comfortable. Once I'm comfortable and I've worked the scene, I'll set a time that works for me and my reader slash coach to go and do the self-tape and then I'll go do the self-tape. I'll do the appropriate edits in the uh, casting workbook app and then I'll send it off to my agent. Um, by the way, one of the things you mentioned time zones earlier, which was great. And I wanted to remind everybody that the actor app 3.0, it automatically will change the time zone for you as well. Um, so just to make sure it'll, it'll adjust to your current one, um, which is sort of a nice feature. Um, a lot of actors wondering, do you do a ton of editing? Once you've found the take you're happy with, um, are you pretty casual or will you go in and do any, you know, tiny, uh, end cuts or here or there, anything like that? I would, no, I don't. And I, I've heard from many people, they don't want that. So again, you're auditioning to, for your performance. So they want to see an uninterrupted, un process performance. So I'll, I'll have my reader press play, I'll give my performance, and then I'll stop it at the end. I don't do edits in between. In fact, don't do a thing where you're like, I like the first half of take one, but I like the second half of take two better. And that line on take four, don't Frankenstein a take together, uh, be present, be connected, do a full scene that, that works and send your favorite one. Let's talk more about performance. A uh, question here from um, Jason. He wants to understand about framing. And assuming that there is not, and sometimes this happens, the sides are not clear, is head and shoulders best or should we see more of your torso? Do you, do you think it matters? Medium close is the standard framing you should use for a self tape. And I've, I've heard this from producers and from directors and I'll offer it to you guys why. A lot of times they're casting off of iPhones or tablets. 
I know that actors, we have this idea that casting directors are sitting in this like, you know, casting bat cave with a, a giant movie theater sized screen that they're watching it in. But, you know, I have friends who work for major networks who told me that they have cast roles or, or, or at least set callbacks based on watching takes on a tablet or iPhone. So framing is important because you imagine if you're watching on a screen that's the size of the palm of your hand, you've got to be pretty close up. They, they got to see the performance, right? So mm -hmm. the only time I'll show my full body is if the directions specifically say in the slate to, to do, tilt up and do a full body, I'll do that for my slate. But the standard standard is mid close, which is the frame you see me in right now, just below the shoulders, not too much room above the head right here. This is a great tip. Um, Omari, what happens when you want to offer more than one take or more than one read on the character for the, for the self tape. Will you do multiple takes in the same submission or will you break it and submit it, uh, you know, two or three different versions? How do you approach that? Yeah. If I'm, if I am going to do two dramatically different takes on the same scene, I'll do take one, I'll cut and then I'll do take two and start it afterwards. Uh, that's what I'll do. You wouldn't, you wouldn't Which just is the same video or not. Not within the same video. I would, right, okay. I would, like I would shoot, I'd press stop, then I would do another one, and I, you know, I would separate them. I wouldn't just like walk out and come back in and be a totally different character. Got it. And when do you decide to do that? When, when, you know, we've talked to so many different casting directors, and, and, and most of you who've been watching week after week have heard different answers on this. From your perspective as, as, as a teacher at one of the best film schools, acting programs in the world, what do you tell your students in terms of when you should take it a little bit outside the lines and be bold and offer a, another take or another version of the audition. When's the right time? How do you know? So there's a couple times when, when they specify they want an accent or a dialect or an option with an accent or dialect, right? I'm somebody who does voice, so I do a bunch of different voices. I, I, sometimes I'll do a take that's with the dialect that they've requested, and then I'll do different variations of that dialect or one that just has my regular speaking voice, right? So that's a time. Um, if I have two appropriate, and that's the key, appropriate based on text analysis, differing takes that I'm, that I'm confident in, I might do the one that I think is the appropriate one first and send that and have as an alt, I'll send the second one. That's, mm. but those would be the only times that I, that I would do that. Um, have you ever found yourself so frustrated and not able to get the self tape you wanted that you completely abandoned it and put it away for a couple hours or for a full day? Do you give yourself room for if you're not feeling it at that particular moment? How is your approach different compared to what it would be like if you were in the room live? Oh, I would say that the, the pressure when you're not in the room is so much less, right? You have unlimited takes. The, the beauty of, of a self tape is you only have to submit one that you're really confident with. So if you give yourself enough runway to rehearse properly so you can go in there and be confident, there, there, should, no, there should be no reason to be frustrated. Because if, if, you're, if you're frustrated because you don't know your lines, well, you know you've got to rehearse more and know your lines. But if you've analyzed text properly and you've rehearsed properly, there shouldn't be anything to be frustrated about. Uh, a question coming in here from Williams. Williams is in Winnipeg, wants to know about tripods. Have you got any advice or advice about uh, portrait mode versus landscape mode and any particular tripods? I'm glad you brought that up. Do not shoot in portrait mode. I, I, I hope I said this before, but so I'll show you guys. Which is por portrait yeah, mode, don't, landscape. You don't want to be shooting like this, right, where it's vertical. You want to be shooting in landscape mode, right? Think about how people watch TV shows because if you do it like this, You'll have that take where it's like you and then two, you know, black spaces on either side. So you want to shoot like this. Uh, and for tripods, yeah, like you can get a standard mini tripod for your phone. Uh, casting Workbook actually offers uh, a really great one that has a little, you know, thing that you can put on the bottom of your phone that connects to all different universal uh, tripods. So either, you know, drop 20 bucks to get one of these. You can get a, a cheap standard size tripod as well. Or you could even, what I've done many times, you know, if I don't have that, I'll stack books and I'll lean my iPhone against it and use my laptop as a backdrop to prop it up so you can adjust the angle of your laptop to get the, that perfect angle. Yeah, right, right. So many little tricks there that you can do just to, to prop it up and make sure that it, it's going well. Um, also, any advice? I'm seeing one here from Jennifer. Jennifer is in Vancouver and wants to know about smudges on lenses. Is there any particular way you pre-clean your lenses on your phone? Um, and some people are also asking about like, um, you know, when you can get those little 
those glass protector shields over top of those cameras, at least for the selfie facing ones. Um, mm-hmm. Should people be worried or avoid those? Do you th- are they overthinking it? Can they, can they take away? I think uh, wipe your lens before you film. I've definitely had times where I'm looking at the image, I'm not sure what it is, and you just you know, wipe it down and, and that, that helps. Um, but and, you know, for the iPhone, the camera usually is unaffected by your case. Like the glass protector is more for the, for the front here, so I wouldn't worry too much about that. Um, in terms of when you are in your own environment and you are about to do the audition and you are in the moment of doing it and you think you may have made a mistake, will you stop and correct yourself or take a back line within the, the actual self-tape audition or does that require a complete cut and redo when you approach it? So this is an interesting one. I, so if, you, if you're totally in the scene, you're crushing it, and you, you flub a little line. Let's say you were supposed to say, you know, and then I went out and you say, but then I went out. I don't think it's that big of a deal. And what I'll offer to you is, if you go on YouTube, you can find the final auditions for the show Breaking Bad, right? Mm-hmm. Aaron Paul's, for example. Aaron Paul was brilliant in this audition and he flubbed some of his lines. And he, he was actually holding his sides, which of course is not ideal, but maybe he was on a gig, I'm not sure. But his connection to the character was so strong that his performance and the essence of the character still shone through despite a little mistake. So remember, this is not like a, a recitation exam. They're looking, especially in the first round of auditions, they're looking to see your, your professionalism and your abilities as a performer, not for necessarily a, a word perfect audition. That said, rehearse your lines. You should be word perfect if possible, but don't throw away a brilliant take because you've loved one line. That's interesting insight. I'm really curious in the chat log how many of you uh have done that or found yourself in that frustrating position and you think, oh man, I got to, I got to walk over, cut and do the whole thing over again. That's really important. Another question I'd love to know how you approach this, Omari. And in particular with our Actor 3.0 app, this, if you have representation, you can have this go right to your, to your agent and they can look at it. Do you ask anyone's opinion before you click send, whether it's your agent or anyone else, or do you, or do you trust your gut? And what, what do you tell your students on that front? So I've, I've been doing this long enough and the people I work with, uh, I trust that usually my reader will be an experienced actor and between the two of us, we'll know, you know if I'm in it or not and I'll watch the take. Uh, and my agent, uh, my principal agent, shout out to Murray Gibson at Red uh, Talent, Red Management. He'll, he'll let me know if I send the garbage audition, <laughs> you know, usually, because your agent yeah. represents you, right? They'll, they'll let you know. So ideally you have uh, a coach who's watching with you if you're not that experienced or your agent will let you know uh, if they want you to resubmit and make an adjustment. So. Interesting. I'm fascinated by it. I mean, actors, you, we love you here at Casting Workbook. You guys have, I think, one of the most difficult jobs, one of the greatest jobs in the world, one of the most difficult ones that the, the, to have to audition and really think about that particular moment. I know of no other prof- profession that really has this kind of scrutiny and critique and judgment attached to such a quick moment of performance and the self tape and how you do it is so so important do you think the self tape has or will make it easier for actors to shine at their best or do you think it's just added uh, another layer of complexity that's part of where we are today in the industry i've heard wildly varying things on this i know you'll be shocked to know a lot of actors are very extroverted um, yeah, yeah. I, I am not. I'm one of the rare actors who I'm kind of a, an introvert, but some of my extroverted friends say they love going in the room. They love having, uh, you know, that physical presence and that feeling of like, I'm about to give a, a performance. There's this brilliant acting coach uh, named Michael Kostroff who was on The Wire. He played the, the lawyer. Uh, he said he views auditions as a chance to act on a Thursday afternoon. He's like, it's opening night on a Thursday afternoon, right? Uh, for me, I, I like to focus on being present in the moment. So I love doing self-tapes because there's no pressure to, to be giving a performance. I can just focus on the work and embodying the character. So it depends on the person. Uh, I want to I leave you with two, uh, two final questions in just a moment um, before we wrap. I want to, A, I want to thank you so much, Omari, for doing this today. And on behalf of you and Casting Workbook, we're going to make a donation to afchelps.ca as You're well welcome. as the actorsfund.org in the US. You're, you're amazing for doing this. I want to congratulate you and the Vancouver Film School on now another year of being the only school in Canada uh, recognized on Variety's top global film schools. 
what an amazing honor. And I, and I know how proud you are. And that says a lot about you and the faculty there and Jen Clement and the whole team at the Acting for Film and Television program. You've got just an unbelievable group. And I'm, I know I'm a little biased. I know you guys well, but man, it means a lot. You take the time to do this. Um, I want to thank Susan Fox for jumping on. She is so outstanding and you guys are going to get a chance to talk to her more. We're going to book a special uh, workshop just around the new actors. I have to really dive deep. Susan's going to show you that. Got to thank Taylor Fox for making a cameo appearance. Taylor, an amazing guy, part of our team, and day in, day out, he's, he's always working, even if he's got to be right there standing in as a model. By the way, ladies, he is a young, eligible bat bachelor. Um, I'm sure he'll appreciate me telling you all that, but uh, in these trying times, uh, <laughs> you've never been a better time to introduce yourself to a young uh, Taylor Fox. He's great. Um, and what we'll do next time, Omar, is I'm going to make this available to all of uh, casting workbook members everywhere. So if you missed it or you jumped in late, they'll be able to go back and watch it. Um, what would be great is for people who wanna reach you on Instagram and Twitter or Facebook, they can jump on there and you'll engage with them as well. And we've put some notes there for everybody. Um, thank you for doing this, my friend. And to all of you actors, we love you guys. We're gonna keep going. Wait do you see the one we've got planned for you this week on Thursday. Make sure you register for that live stream. Final two questions. This comes up a lot too. Um, props and being in character for the self tape. Um, you might have a bit more space or maybe just like yours, you're in a, you're in a tighter space. Should actors in their self tape use props? Um, is it necessary or should they just mime it out? I would say no. And I, I wouldn't really mime either. The most I'll use for prop are my sides or my cell phone. And, and think of a self tape as an extension of when you're in the room. So I, I don't recommend props into rooms, especially like guns or weapons. So I wouldn't recommend them necessarily at home. So Got a question I, I, from... I, uh, oh, sorry. No, 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 go ahead. Well, and I thought about uh, wardrobe. I think you want to dress in a way that implies the character, but remember, you're not doing cosplay. So, like, if, you've, if you're auditioning to play a farmer, dressing up in overalls and plaid and a straw hat is going to be more distracting than helpful. So dress in a way that implies the, the character. You're not doing a cosplay, though. Not cosplay. Important takeaway. Uh, final questions from Nancy. And again, if you didn't get your question, Omari, don't worry. He's available on social media and he's incredibly approachable and engageable. Um, what are your thoughts on filming in, say, the kitchen? If the scene takes place in the kitchen, should don't. actors who are... <laughs> My thoughts are don't. That, okay. The kitchen, that's brilliant if you're filming a movie, uh, but you know, sets and movies are chosen for very specific reasons and your kitchen might not be conducive to the type of kitchen that your character is reading. And so just, we appreciate the thought, but just use a backdrop and do your audition in a neutral setting so they can focus on your performance. Omari, thank you so much. This was incredibly helpful. And to all of you watching, please, uh, I'm going to make the chat log entirely available to Omari. He's going to get to see everything. Susan and I review all of it. If you've got feedback for me to how I can make it better, how our whole team can make this better for you, we're behind you. We're going to get through this. And every week we're putting more and more on. We'll see you on Thursday for our next live stream. Omari, thank you, my friend. Thank you. And I, I just want to close with this, guys. Uh, Thank you guys for trusting me to talk to you guys about this. And I'm very humbled by your presence here. And just remember, guys, we're all peers. Some of us may be on different legs of the journey. We've had more reps, but, you know, that's all it is. There's no hierarchy in this game. We're all in this together. So best of luck to all you in your careers. You're awesome, pal. I will catch up with you real soon. Thanks to all of you. And we'll see you next time on Casting Workbooks live stream AMA. Have a good one, Omari. You too. Take care.